What is up everybody? More information about Hu Tao has just been dropped and I'm super excited. My last video did amazing and I'm super grateful for all the support I got from the video. In this video, we'll be talking about her skills, her passive, her constellations, and her rumored best in slot weapon. I've read through her skills from the English translation and also in Mandarin and there seems to be some translation error for the English descriptions so I'm gonna go through all of them with you guys. Her basic attack scalings have been released and from what I can see, it is on the higher end of the spectrum of spear users, beating out Xiangling and Zhongli in terms of raw numbers. She does a 6 hit attack combo like Xiao and Zhongli, seems as though 5 star spear characters all do 6 hit combos or 4 stars do 5 hit combos. This is unconfirmed but it's looking like it. She appears to have the same attack pattern as Xiao, doing 2 attacks for their 5th attack. Her elemental burst is translated as butterfly leads to life. It sounds a lot cooler in Mandarin. Basically, it's a one-tap ability that applies two effects at a cost of 30% of her health. It doesn't state max HP or current HP, but I'm quite confident it will be max HP. First, it puts her in this sort of frenzied state where she gains attack based on her max HP, but this attack cannot exceed 300% of her base damage. I noticed this before where her base attack was abysmally low, but looking at her elemental skill, it's starting to make sense. Key thing to note is that in Genshin, Base attack is defined as character base attack plus weapon base attack. With this in mind, 5 star weapons have a huge advantage for her because all of them have a higher base attack which directly influences her attack bonus cap she can gain from her elemental skill. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the attack you can gain from this skill but let's just say she can easily gain a thousand attack without any HP percentage artifacts and two thousand with HP percentage artifacts. I also don't believe stacking HP percentage artifacts is the way to go given the restrictions to her skill, which looks like the bonus attack will be capped at around 1.8k for 4 star weapons and 2.2k for 5 star weapons. She also converts all her damage to pyro when this skill is used, so better stop farming those which are set for her. And she also gains interrupt resistance. This is more insane than you think. Think of all the time wasted from dodging attacks. This allows her to just stand her ground and fight. Finally, she casts a curse called Blood Plume on nearby enemies, dealing damage based on her attack to those enemies every 4 seconds for 8 seconds. It says only one curse can be applied onto one enemy at any given time and the curse can be reapplied to the target to refresh the current duration by attacking them with a charged attack. I got to say this is the most loaded ability I've ever seen. That's like 5 different effects from one ability. Jesus. On to her ultimate, God Suitor. This name is so cool and I hope they keep it. It looks like it's gonna be like Child's ultimate. One big burst of elemental damage. She does have a condition to make it do way more damage though. If her HP is below 50% when casting this ability, it will do more damage. Looks like 30% more damage than before. Let's say you're doing 100k at 100% HP, you'll do 130k at 49% HP, is what I mean. It also heals you based on your max HP multiplied by the number of enemies hit by this skill up to 5. This can easily heal you to full when fighting large groups of enemies but will be weak against bosses. I really like that. It kinda makes you think when to use this ability. It's much simpler compared to her elemental skill. On to her passives. When cooking, she gains a chance to obtain a suspicious dish. This is super niche but there are achievements for cooking suspicious dishes in this game currently and if you manage to somehow master a dish before getting one suspicious dish, this will be the only way currently to obtain that suspicious dish. Mihoyo is giving us a way to get all those achievements, just pay them with your lunch money. Second passive. I don't know what to call the state, so I'm gonna say dancing state. After this dancing state, every member of the team will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. It has a really good synergy with her elemental skill, because from what I can tell, she basically does zero damage without her dancing state. This allows her to be more useful as a member of the team even when her skill is on cooldown. Really cool. Her third passive. Kinda a niche passive. When her HP drops below 50%, she gains 25% bonus pyro damage. She doesn't have a way to reliably drop her HP below 50% besides pressing her skill twice and not using her ultimate before that. I view this as a cherry on top. She looks like she'll definitely do insane damage already. On to constellations. Her first constellation basically says charged attacks do not require stamina in her dancing state. It's a nice little bonus but not too crazy. Constellation 2 states that the blood plume damage is increased by 4% of your max HP and your elemental burst applies the blood plume curse onto your enemies. Really nice bonus to have as well. Constellation 3 increases elemental skill level by 3. Standard constellations, nothing too crazy. Constellation 4 Enemies killed by the blood plume will grant a buff to your team, giving everyone 12% crit rate for 15 seconds except Hu Tao herself. It's really interesting because she can essentially give your team 24% crit rate with one ability. It's a cool talent to have, but not pay to win in my opinion. Constellation 5 Her burst skill level is increased by 3. 
another standard talent, nothing special. Finally, her constellation 6. When her HP drops below 25%, or when she's about to die, she'll gain a buff that gives her 10 seconds of undying rage. Basically, her HP will not fall below 1 for 10 seconds, while also gaining 200% knockback or effect resistance and a 100% bonus crit rate. I don't know how much 200% resistance is, but technically she could still be knockback or stunned. It's not full immunity towards these effects. Okay, the way I see this constellation, it's weird to say the least, because she only does damage while her dancing state is active. I think the damage with and without this state would be clear as day but this constellation requires her to drop below 25%, which means she kinda needs to be low already, swap in, cast her dancing state for triggering this constellation, or she needs to not cast her dancing state, take enough damage to trigger this constellation, then cast it. It would be more useful if it resets the cooldown of the dancing state, but I'm sure Mihoyo knows what they are doing more than me, so I'll leave it up to them. Finally, the weapon. I couldn't find an image or a confirmed source for this, but it seems as though it will be a weapon that grants increased crit damage based on how much HP percentage is lost. Literally the perfect weapon for her, but this is the most likely thing to be changed out of everything we talked about. Personally, she looks like a free to play and low spender friendly unit. The constellations are all nice bonuses to have, but it doesn't change the way she can be played, which is really important. Besides the fact that her weapon is actually miles ahead of anything we currently have for her, but like I said, it is subject to change, so take it with a grain of salt. With that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Leave a comment down below about your thoughts on her. Do you think she'll be good or do you think she'll be bad? Or you don't care about the meta and just love her regardless like me. <laughs> don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more Genshin Impact videos in the future. See ya, bye.